I'll try not to do that again. It's, it's real loud. So maybe I'll holler from the front. It's real loud. Oh, it's not good. We're having all kind of fun trouble today. Technical difficulties. Okay. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Now I'm over here with this. Oh, it's this thing. Yeah, I've seen that before. Okay, testing one, two, so far. Hey, look at that. Welcome friends and neighbors to Zion Lutheran Church, 113 West Main in the crown jewel of Hoosierdom, North Manchester, Indiana. We're so glad you're all here today. David's got a few announcements and we'll see what the rest of you have to say. Okay, prayer requests. Jane Ann Airgood is at Timbercrest in Healthcare. Uh, right down by Joanne Betcher. It'll be an easy visit for us. And Marie Betton's there, so I'll try to mosey out that way this week. Other news of note? Well, friends, today we're considering the shepherd's care. And we're going to let Elizabeth take us to the green pasture. When you're ready. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, there's water in the baptistry. Here's our water of life. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation into the flood, into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you open the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is, here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the words for this first hymn are from 1050. That's a thousand years ago, and they're some of the best words I ever heard in my life. The music is from the early 1800s. Let's stand and sing our first hymn today. Christ the Lord is risen today. You've heard that title, but this one's different, friends. This is different. Yeah. 
Let's rise and sing, shall we?
Our first reading is from Acts 4, 5 through 12. Peter and John had been arrested the previous day because they were proclaiming the news of the resurrection to the people. In today's reading, Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit so that he can proclaim salvation in Jesus' name to the religious authorities. A reading from Acts. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Cathias, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we were questioned today because of the good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to you and to all people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortal by which we must be saved. A reading from Acts, the word of God, the word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's read Psalm 23 responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord, the Lord is my down green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading is from John 3, 16 through 24. Jesus' death on our behalf is the clearest demonstration of divine love. This is the very love we share with others, not just through our words, but especially through our deeds. In sharing such love, we fulfill God's commandments. A reading from John. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need, and yet he refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in words or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the true and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit he has given us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
gospel according to John, chapter 10, verses 11, 18. Glory to you. All right. Now, I have a real issue with modern punctuation and capitalization. In my way of thinking, what I was taught in fourth grade by Mrs. Landis, is that when you're referring to deity, you should capitalize the letter. Now, I'm just old school here. And so I'll try to read it with proper capitalization. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father, the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord. As I uh, was listening to the wonderful music and everything that's happened so far, I remembered being in a chapel at the college, and I heard Bill Eberly say, if you were on trial today for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Let's see. Okay, kids, I got a story. Come on up today. Everybody gets a little something today up here. You're going to help with this story. <laughs> My sense is, young man, you could use this trusty rod. You hang on to that. Now, don't go whooping your sister with that. <laughs> My sense is, you need this crooked stick that I found by the river years ago. And since it's your home church, you get the pretty Lutheran one, okay? <laughs> now I want you to turn around here so the folks can see you. Kind of, yeah, that's great. Let's do that. <laughs> what am I? A sheep. I'm a sheep. How'd you know that? Because you made the noise. Because you knew the voice of the sheep, didn't you? Now what am I? Arr, 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 arr. And what have I come to do? And what you going to do with that rod? You're going to whoop me with it. Go ahead and bop my little head there. And what are you going to do with that other one? That's in case the sheep's got a brother. You're going to bop him too? Oh, 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 oh. Well, you're pretty good shepherds. Now, what are some other things that sheep might need help with? Yes? Food. Food, because they don't know where to graze. Cookie. Cookies. Cookies? Puppies? No, that's a, that's a thirsty sheep. I need water, okay? But I don't see too good. Now, what if I poof, fell down in a pit? What would you use to get me out? Stick. Well, stick it around my neck and see if you can pull me out. <laughs> oh, thank you, good shepherd. Thank you, good shepherd. You did a fine Sheep. job. Sheep can't talk. Sheep can't talk. Oh, wait a minute. Jesus knows their voice. No, yeah, my grandson said, Grandpa, you can't talk dog. I said, I sure can. I can tell when that dog's hungry. You did a fine job. People would think sheep can't talk, but the whole point of the day's story is the shepherd with the rod and the staff 
and knowledge comforts the sheep. Now, turn around and look at this. Turn around and look at this. See these sheep I got here? Well, there's all different kind of colored sheep, aren't there? There's big ones. There's the little ones. God loves all the sheep. Now, what do you think this is today? A plant. It's a plant. Right. Have you ever seen one of these before? No. Do you know what it is? You, oh, you, lettuce? No, it's not lettuce. This is lamb's ear. Lamb's? Lamb's ear. It kind of looks like a little lamb's ear. See the ear there? Lamb's ear. And, and I wanted to give each of you a lamb's ear to take home. I've got them right there. And then you can plant them in your garden after the frost is gone. They're pretty hardy, though. And you can water them and you can tend them like a shepherd. Okay? Now, the big point I got. Let's turn back around here. Yeah, you're okay. It, it, don't worry. You can bop him at home it's later. Hard. It's hard stick. Yeah. Well, this is lamb's ear. Do you remember when we told you that Jesus is the Lamb of God? You remember that? Jesus is the Lamb of God. You remember that? He's the one who takes away the sins of the world. Well, lambs have ears, right? Yeah. You have ears. God has ears. And so, friends, because you believe in Jesus Christ, you have the lamb's ear within you. Jesus even... Go ahead, you can touch it. It's soft like a lamb's ear. Oh, yes. Oh, you have to take them home and give them to your mom, won't you? Yeah, okay. Well, I, if you were real hungry, you could eat it, but you better Google it first and find out. Okay? So that's the story, friends. And now this is for Mac McKinley. I want you to look back at that camera and say, Good morning, Mac. Good morning, Mac. Good okay. Morning, Mac. And Mac, you've got the lamb's ear, too. All right. Now, after the service, I've got some lamb's ears. I got 10. Uh, hopefully, there'll be enough. One per household. Okay? Let's put our hands together and thank the children. Now, you put the sticks and stuff back up here. Okay? Good. So, if I, if I get home and I got knots on my head, I'll tell my wife I got them at Zion Lutheran Church. Thank you. All right. Good job, kids. Good job. Good job. Oh, golly. <laughs> Well, there you go, a story for all the children of Zion. Now, I want to talk to the rest of you here. This will be an adult sermon from here on out. <laughs> Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That's what I've been thinking about. God's table, the Eucharistic table, the table where we serve our open communion. It's been prepared for us in the presence of life's enemies. God's table, this Eucharistic table, is prepared for us in the presence of our enemies. The other scriptures today help me understand that. In the gospel reading, Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. John in his first epistle, that letter says, Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Therefore, we ought to lay down our lives for each other by showing love and concern care and protection, just like the good shepherd cares for his sheep. And we'd ought to listen to each other with our lamb's ears. John says that the Spirit of God is given to us to enable this ministry of love to actually happen. When they asked the fellows, by what power do you do this healing of the crippled beggar? Peter, who was full of the Holy Spirit, says, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man, this crippled man who was healed, is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In other words, the authority that Peter and John had to minister was in the name of Jesus. By whose authority? Well, by Jesus' authority. This Jesus, as she read, is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It's become the cornerstone. The, the foundation of faith that had been rejected by the, the, the Jewish leaders has now become the stone upon which all our faith is built. And I just love this verse, the 12th verse. There is salvation in no one else, 
For there is no other name under heaven among, given among mortals by which we must be saved. Now, I don't know how you get more plain than that. And that, you could go at a Pentecostal church for about two weeks on that, friends. But it's in our Bible, too. And it's in our elections. So if you want to be saved, get to know the Good Shepherd and live in His name. All these words taken together surely do describe Jesus Christ as the Good Shepherd who's with us in the presence of our enemies. This is His table. And we're coming to his table today, but, but then we got to walk back out there in the presence of our enemies. So I got to thinking, what enemies are present at the Lord's table? And, and I really cherish my greeting time. When you come in, you, you tell me what's going on good. You tell me what's going on bad. And so y you walked in today with some enemies. How about death? That's that thing that ends it all, which will happen to us all. But as to when it will happen, all of us just don't know. How about destruction? It can cause our death, and maybe destroy our family, our homes, our vehicles, our wealth, our possessions. Could destroy the nation, could destroy the earth. Death, destruction, well, it's disease is next, right? That's related to all the other ones. From mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual diseases, Conditions, addictions, plagues, viruses, bacterial diseases, those spread by germs in our water and food supplies, even to our computers. The list goes on, friend. Pain, got a few. Poverty, you'll eventually outlive your money or outlive its ability to help you. How about regret? Ooh, that's an enemy. Greed, gossip, Slothfulness, sin and war, pride and prejudice, racism. These present enemies are many and more. But what has God provided for us on his table in the presence of mine enemies? What do the scriptures tell us today? And what inspiration and assurance can they offer? Y'all remember the most famous Hoosier television personality after Chris Schenkel is David Letterman. Well, this is scripture's top 10 list today, friends. You count them with me. The scriptures today tell us that one, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Two, that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Three, that we know the name of the good shepherd who loves us and saves us and that name is Jesus of Nazareth. Four, we can ask Jesus of Nazareth to save us and rescue us. Five, because we ask, we know that we'll receive good from him. Six, and we know that Jesus abides in us because of the spirit that Jesus has given us. That's how we know him. Seven, we have Jesus promised to stay with us and not run away. Friends, it seems to me that God is ready, that's eight, that Jesus is willing, that's nine, and that the Holy Spirit is able to shepherd us safely. Ready, willing, and able. The Good Shepherd will be with us through this life with all its dangers, toils, and trials. Jesus leads us by the power of God to overcome sin and death, and he abides with us from now on throughout eternity unto the good Lord's table of grace, which is prepared for us today and forevermore. Now, I got a big space right here. And this is where I get a wax on about the things that as the sheep of God's pasture we should be doing. Well, generally, it's Fighting those enemies who are present with us at the table. Fighting greed. Fighting war. Fighting poverty. Fighting death. Coming up with good science to beat things. Fighting prejudice. Fighting? Well, there is a rod as part of the shepherd's tools. And then the other part is we're, we're supposed to be rescuing with the hook. Bringing people to the good Lord faith. And then that, that final hook might be helping them to understand our Lutheran way of following Christ. Might be that one. 
But the first two are the big ones, the rod and the staff, okay? My Uncle Dick used to say, there's some guys you just need a baseball bat for. <laughs> and Aunt Dorothy said, oh, Dick, that'll never hook them. But I expect there's times in our life when we felt the rod of the Lord's justice that made us wish that we had lived a life a little closer to being hooked by Jesus. Well, when we look at Psalm 23 and consider these signs of the shepherd, that's the children's story title, Signs of the Shepherd, perhaps today we will understand. Now that word perhaps today, that phrase I got from a Vietnam veteran named Wally, who has just one leg now, and he comes to see me in the early morning hours at the chapel. And a lot of times I'll get to the chapel and he'll already be there. It's dim, and his eyes were burnt somehow in his service to the country, and the light doesn't work for him. He's always got his sunglasses on. He said, I've been thinking, maybe we ought to get T-shirts that say, perhaps today. Perhaps today we will understand that we are not wanting anything. Perhaps today we'll understand that we are sheep in green pastures. Perhaps today we'll know that we're protected and restored and on the right path in Jesus' name. Perhaps today, even when dark days are upon us, we will not be afraid because perhaps today we know that God's rod and staff comfort us. Perhaps today, friends, we know that the Good Shepherd is with us, feeding and anointing us till our cups overflow. Perhaps today, with the taste of this bread and the flavor of this cup, we will receive God's goodness and mercy, which will follow us all our days until the Good Shepherd leads us home to be with Him for all time. Truly then, the Lord is our good shepherd. Perhaps today, Lord, may we follow thee more closely. Amen and amen. Our next hymn is number 502, The King of Love My Shepherds Is, 502. And this is an old Irish tune. The words come from the mid-1800s. The king of love my shepherd is. Let's rise and sing, shall we?
Now we will say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, now let us pray for the church. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and, and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church in ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global, co global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems, inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and to use such power for good. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune system. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially those on our current prayer list. Dan Spiker, Robbie and Steve Royer, Peter Siddons, Norma Berkey, Jan Root, Jim Burdett, Todd and Linda, Tony Rogers, Craig, Stephanie, Jane Ann Aragood, Joyce O'Brien, Denise Royer, Nancy Sheffield, Earl McKinley, Jack Williams, Peggy Gilbert, Linda Hampton, Marie Betton Nickham, Joanne Butcher, Nancy Coble, Lois Dowd, Phyllis Working, Darlene Shear, Faith Miller, John Frieden, John Fairfield, Amy Fry Miller, and for the family of Herb, Herb Anderson in his passing. For those who suffer from war, including the people of Ukraine, the Palestinians of Gaza, and the people of Israel, especially those taken hostage and the strength and discernment for the people of Zion Lutheran Church. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. Invite us to move more deeply, love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. God of grace, hear our prayer. Living God, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith, 
strengthen us to share the good news in our own day, God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we say the offering prayer together. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and most merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and sea and all their creatures, and with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Thank you. 
Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. And the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Our sending hymn is Thine is the Glory. Music by Handel. Words from the dawn of the 20th century. Thine is the Glory. Let's stand and sing, shall we?
go in peace, rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Enjoy the postlude, friends. at Peabody Chapel, Elizabeth Smith is premiering a three-part uh, violin concerto, and Alan's going to play the organ. So tune in on Peabody Chapel or come in person. Plenty of seats in the balcony, friends. <laughs> 